टीम जस्ट गिव मी वन मिनिट वी आर फेसिंग सम टेक्निकल डिफिकल्टीज एट द स्पीकर्स एंड जस्ट प्लीज बी पेशेंट थैंक यू we apologize for this technical glitch here just within a half a minute we will get apua palta ma'am here meanwhile i request participants that uh, if you have questions uh, in between lecture you can post directly to the host or co-host the co-host will be uh, madam apua palta madam
ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ ಅರ್ಜೆಂಟ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಗಿರ್ಬೇಕಲ್ಲ ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ ಅರ್ಜೆಂಟ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಅಪೂರ್ವ ಪಾಲ್ಕರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಮೈ ನೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಕೆನ್ Deakin, can you just uh, enable the screen share for me, please? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we are doing it for you right now, ma'am. I'll just introduce you to them, ma'am. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Deakin. And on behalf of I4C, we would like to welcome you all to this very special edition of Gyan Class 2021 in association with my esteem colleagues at IFC KCIIL. IFC continually... For, uh, IFOC continually focuses on student innovation entrepreneurship and seeks to solve the question of what comes next for a student on his or her journey with successful events like the smart india hackathon the smart school hackathon gyan hacks and now of course gyan class we constantly endeavor to bring you the best platforms to tune your knowledge levels and this is one of them a few ground rules before we start please keep yourself muted at all times for any questions on the zoom platform please ask the host slash co-host directly in the chat box we will endeavor to answer all the questions post session or at a later time if the for time constraint is there for example we've started about 5 to 7 minutes a little late with this being said we are pleased to bring you decoding innovation the journey from student to entrepreneur and to help you understand this journey we take pleasure of introducing one of the most dynamic personalities straddling innovation in both the education and the startup ecosystem dr apurva palkar ma'am dr apurva palkar ma'am is a director of innovation incubation and linkages at savitri bai phule pune university formerly known as pune university she is an experienced executive board member with a demonstrated history of working in the education industry and she is an acclaimed institution builder she is a startup specialist and is leading research innovation and linkages in sp pune university she has immense expertise in public policy and business strategy being an astute research and alliance specialist along with the above responsibilities ma'am is also a member secretary on the following boards the board of academic council the board of innovation incubation and linkages and the board of research as well as the board of linkage thank you ma'am for joining us the floor is yours hi good morning everyone uh i've done the screen share can you see it uh not yet ma'am okay can you yes yes we can see it ma'am yes ma'am you can go to slide show ma'am yes ma'am is that okay yes yes ma'am okay. just uh, let me know if there is any problem on the presentation part no no ma'am it's fine it's fine ma'am absolutely good morning everyone and uh, i thank uh, deken for having taken this initiative and brought us all together today this uh, beautiful morning and uh, i am amazed i'm happy delighted because uh, this is in association with the 
uh, with our own colleagues in North Maharashtra University, Jalgaon, which was a surprise to me because I was not aware that I'm doing this for uh, uh, the university and with whom uh, Gita sir and I see Nikhil Kulkarni there, a lot of other colleagues from the university with whom we've all grown together in this journey. I guess we have uh, uh, students with us. Deccan, is that right? All the students with us? Yes, yes, ma'am. Correct. That is absolutely right. 95% are students, ma'am. 95% of the students. So you've given me a very, very um, apt and appropriate topic, uh, which is decoding innovation, journey from student to entrepreneurship. I know it sounds like a very, very tall order in terms of uh, covering this whole topic in uh, 40, 45 minutes, because it is about talking of the mindset of the student and how do we try and look at the right kind of people to engage in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Having said this, let me come to my first slide today. And I know uh, you all are in the college life. And in college life, uh, we're all tuned to, you know, uh, the typical kind of uh, uh, the lifestyle that we have, where we have semesters, and then we have semester break, and a new semester. And when your syllabus actually starts off, and then that's the day where you start, you know, getting irritated. Oh my God, I have to learn so much, study so much in this whole semester. Um, and then we spend half of our class time in terms of assessing our teacher, saying that whether the teacher is up to the mark or not up to the mark. Assessment may add us and the semester khatam ho jata hai. And by the time 50% of the class says, wow, what teacher kit me achi, the teacher was so nice. We were almost lost half 50% uh, of our class having not gone to the teacher's class, you know. So we are all the time in the assessment mode, we're not so much in the learning mode. Um, at times, the teachers give us some group projects and then, you know, what happens in a group project, you yourself know. So I'm not getting into all that, you know, and when uh, the semester ends is the time when you feel very, very happy and excited, you know, Ki khatam ho gaya, now this is done kind of thing. However, having said that, this is what is the college life all about. But a transitioning from the college life into what we... Uh, term ourselves as into the career journey. And if I ask about all of you, if I ask you a question, what is your ambition? And what is that favorite position that you would like to take up in your life? I know that at least 70 to 80% of you would say that I would like to be the, at the topmost position in the organization that I go into. Which is my favorite position is being a CEO. And if you don't desire to do that, then there's something wrong with you. If you don't aspire to do something really good in your life and really best in your life, there is no meaning to what we are doing today. And why do we live at all? We live because we want to make our lives very, very meaningful. And I think youth today is very, very ambitious and they really want to do the best. Today, I am speaking to you and I am assuming that the average age of this group would be between 18 to 20. By the United States, the average age of the first startup that the student does is between 13 to 18. And by the time the kid is 18, when he is about 18 years old, is the time when he's already got into his second venture. However, in India, this journey is slightly at a, at a step behind why, how the Western world is moving. I will also give you the reasons why people have got into entrepreneurial ecosystem at a very, very early age in my discussion today. I know after completing your graduation, if you're in the graduation or if you're in the post-graduation, what each one aspires to do is get into a nice, beautiful job. You know, most of us aspire to get into a job. So there is a dilemma whether I should get into a job or whether I should start my own entrepreneurial venture. And when there is a dilemma, in the dilemma, especially now that we are in the COVID times where things are changing, the new normal where a lot of 
changes and disruptions are happening in the industry itself, uh, you know, it becomes very, very tough and challenging to be all the time on your toes if you have to be in the employment market. Now, this is a very typical slide that I have shown where it states that I want to, I mean, someone says that, okay, Bangalore is a beautiful city and Bangalore is a city where the weather is very, very nice. Bangalore is a, is a beautiful city where there are so many corporates. Uh, the life is happening in Bangalore and I would like to go and work in Bangalore. Having said this, when people start working, what happens in, the, in, in, in their experiences where you know, in about two to three years where they've been laid off. So, so here is a boy who says that I struggled a lot to find a job in Bangalore. It took me six months, but now there is no job security, even if you are a permanent employee. So there's nothing called permanency in life. So these are the struggles and challenges that people are facing even in their normal working life. Having said this, in a given normal working life, where I will be defining my work basis, some CEO of a company or a promoter of the company who decides what is the work that I'm supposed to do. And as opposed to that, I become an entrepreneur myself at a very early stage in my life. And I say that I will define the vision of working of myself as well as for the people who will be associated with me, right? So this, these are the two things that you need to think upon. In your brain, you need to understand that am I going to work for the vision of someone else or add, be under stress all the time whether I'll be able to sustain my job and will I get a promotion in my job, whether I'll get a raise in my salary and will I sustain uh, all the economic uh, bubbles, etc. And will there be a competitor who may want to take me, etc., etc. Or get in, into the well of entrepreneurship where I say that I'm going to be my own boss. So this is a choice that you have to make all for yourselves, okay? So my question to everyone here is, is entrepreneurship the solution to what I am speaking to you? I'm not sure whether everyone wants to get into entrepreneurship who is joined this webinar today. I'm sure when we speak of entrepreneurship, we don't know where to start from. As college students, uh, we really don't know what is the starting point for us. Some of us are aware of what are things happening around us, but about 60, 70% of the people don't know how to start this journey. I'm a student, so how could I really start my journey? The simplest way of starting your journey is when I start promoting entrepreneurship. I start looking at products, I start looking at small companies around me and I start talking about them. I start understanding them and I start ensuring that I speak about, about them uh, at various forums and platforms and that is what is promoting entrepreneurship. And this is what we call it as an entrepreneurial student. A lot of you have that instinct in you. Some of you come from business families. A lot of you who come from business families have actually seen, um, you know, how to do a business. However, not everyone comes from a business family. There may be people uh, who are in this group today whose parents may be bankers. There may be someone whose parents may be work, uh, government servants. There may be a few people whose parents may be working in the private sector. Uh, some may be in the teaching profession. I'm not sure. You come from different uh, versatile backgrounds. And when you come from different versatile backgrounds, it is important for you to look inside you to understand whether this excites you. If someone has brought a new product or a service in the market, do you talk about it? Do you think about it? So that is what we call as an entrepreneurial student who starts talking, thinking about entrepreneurship when he is a student. And over the period of time, when you start thinking about these products around you, maybe someone has come out with a small app, 
there is a small uh, app which talks about uh, you know traffic congestion in your city there is uh, someone who is talking on the garbage solutions in the city and so on and so forth there could be multiple problems around you and there could be multiple people who are finding solutions to the problem around you so uh, from the start of entrepreneurship is where the student will start feeling from within himself that i also want to have a business idea of my own there are multiple examples around you you know i'm sure you would have come across a lot of students who have some hobby and they have converted that hobby into a profession uh, uh, there are a lot of people who've been good in their science and technology and some experiments that they have done and they've converted that into you know uh, in, 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 into a business i gave an example with some days back while i was doing a session and it's available on the youtube as well where we said that there was a there was one girl uh, who was very fond of buying uh, second hand books and she would go and keep buying books and reading books but over a period of time she realized that there will be multiple people like me who like to read books and they cannot afford to go and buy a new book and that is where she came out with a app and a platform that she created and that is now she converted her, her hobby into her profession where she has an app which is only selling second hand books so there could be multiple things as in your student life that you come across and you that that is what we call it as a business idea which get gets converted into a business plan and this is where the journey of a potential student entrepreneur actually starts and this is where then you you would have someone who helps you a teacher or a faculty member or your uh, someone in your near family who is in business who helps you realize that idea and that is where a student entrepreneur is born so i'm sure a lot of you who are today with me have that what i call it as that small kida in your mind that mujhe ye banna hai mujhe entrepreneur banna hai ye kida lekar you have come into this particular class that we are going to be discussing and talking today now what is it that you take from your college studies in your college studies someone is doing your art someone is doing your science someone is doing history someone is doing ai ml someone is doing uh, electronics as uh, someone is doing the business administration i'm sure most people understand the concepts intellectually all of you understand the concept and i'm sure teacher is teaching you a concept is taught to you in the class you know how you've understood the concept and you know how to reproduce it in the examination but we really how many of us have actually gone back to see how do we practice this regularly and through a repeated behavior and i'm sure if we are able to bring what we've learned in the classroom through what we call it as the practice in the regular behavior to solve a problem to repeat a behavior is where a entrepreneur is actually born this is the new beginning this is the beginning that we are all discussing today that whatever you've done for maybe 12 plus 4 16 years or 12 plus 3 15 years or 12 plus 3 plus 2 or 12 plus 4 plus 2 that the amount of years that you spend in learning so many things is there some concept that you could put into practice and solve a particular problem and bring out what i call it as an enterprise is where i think you will be doing a great service to this particular nation but let me bring to you the reality now here i'm sure few of you are convinced that you want to get into this world of entrepreneurship now this world of entrepreneurship startup innovation people say that your idea has to be innovative okay if your idea has to be bold your idea has to be innovative and you get into the real world and here is a cartoon which is showing what i'm trying i want you to find a bold and innovative way to do everything exactly the way i did 25 years ago uh, ago so people like me of my age is what you will be dealing with and they are stereotyped 
हर चीज इसी तरीके से करनी चाहिए और ऐसे ही होनी चाहिए चाहे आप कितना इनोवेशन ले आओ लाइफ में किसी भी तरीके का आप इनोवेशन ले आओ पर वो इनोवेशन जैसे मैं लाइफ जी रही थी मुझे वैसा ही लाइफ जीना है ऐसे माइंडसेट के लोगों के सामने यू हैव टू ब्रिंग योर इनोवेटिव प्रोडक्ट फॉर एग्जांपल इफ आई एम एट द एज ऑफ फिफ्टी थ्री आई हैव बीन यूज टू ओनली यूजिंग मनी विच इज दोट यू नो रोकड़ा जिसे हम कहते हैं वो यूज करने की मुझे आदत है एंड इफ समन कम्स एंड you know uh, gives me an option of a plastic money i found it very difficult so similarly there are so many innovative products that came into the market which found real tough challenging times for people to accept because people are so used to doing things in a standard a definite manner a definite manner is that i i go to the market to buy a product and come back e-commerce found its own diff- toughness and challenges in terms of people's acceptance it was only because the pandemic that we saw that there was a sudden change but around you will find people who will say that bhai mere ko nahi badalne ka main jaisi hu mere ko waisa hi rehna so this is how the clients are going to be around you now here is another second cartoon slide that i have brought here you know when uh, the world feels that creativity is like a training program that i am doing with you i do a training program and i make you creative so here it says that thank you for calling business creative seminars if you would like to become a creative problem solver press this button and then you know uh, without any touching any part of the telephone and you become a so it's not as simple as that you know being creative being innovative requires a lot of thinking you know it requires a lot of dedication and i will in my due course of time in the session also try and run you through uh, uh, some of the examples where people have done it and you would also find a lot of big vultures i call them as vultures so there are huge companies those huge companies are only waiting for some innovative product to come by and they are just saying ki are kuch innovative product hai kya available is there a product which is available and can i manufacture million of it you know so that is what is the thought that people have so this is the world of chaos that you are getting into and in this world of chaos that you are trying to get into uh, not at all not at all sorry there was a message from deccan so i had to answer that so um, okay so what you are getting into is you are getting into a world of chaos you are going getting into a world which is uh, very very tough it is not going to be an easy uh, boat for any one of you because you have to struggle to ensure that the new product or the service or an entrepreneur that you want to become you will have a lot of people to say boss ye nahi chalega iska product to fail hone wala hai iski service to fail hone wali hai so this is the kind of you know challenge which i have shown in the screen in front of you is what you are getting and i'm not discouraging you at all i don't get me wrong that i'm discouraging you at all now this brings me to one very unique example which i would like to share with everyone this is an example of a very very uh, unique innovative company which is run by kapil shekhe Now the reason why I have taken this example to share with you is because Kapil Sharma brought out the product in the market with which was a project of his college while he was doing his engineering. When Kapil was studying in Bharti Vidya Pit in Pune, uh, that time it was a part of Pune University. Kapil decided. he got a first prize for in 2005 i'm talking of 2005 when he created an electric bike and this electric bike was the fourth year project of his engineering and there was a competition that was held in the college itself where he was judged as the best student project he didn't stop at being called as a student project of the innovation that he had done 
he decided to get into, so this is 2005 project. He started getting into uh, competitions worldwide. So he decided in 2006, 7, 8 consecutively, he went to Europe, he was in Spain, and he went to, to a lot of uh, competitions and he started winning prizes and the money that he would get as the winner uh, in those competitions is what he would invest back into creating the bike as a better bike. And this is where Kapil decided that uh, while he was in one of these shows, a Chinese company spotted him and this Chinese company took him back to China and he worked for that company in China to understand the complete technology and wherewithal of electric bike industry and spent almost about two years in China. He came back and in 2010, he established his uh, own company um, and because he felt that it was important to have an entity. So 2005 to 2010, five years transition for Kapil in terms of understanding that he wants to be in this space and he wants to keep on innovating the product that he's got. And when he was innovating and the expertise that he got in from China and from the other competitors, when you go to the, to the competition, you also understand what is it that the others are doing? What is it which is better than what I have done? The competition is always a space to understand uh, the competitor very, very simply, and especially in the world space, if you are able to get into the competition. In 2016, uh, I'm sure you have heard about uh, Bhave Shakravar, who was uh, the owner of Ola some time back, he met um, our couple who is from Pune and gave him an investment of 3.5 crores to create his co first commercial prototype. And from here, Bharat Forge, which is uh, Mr. Amit Kalyani, who is the son of Mr. Baba Kalyani, invested 30 crores in the pre series investment. So this has been the journey of Kapil Shalke, right from a project which was a college project to an enterprise which is being spoken of. And today he has done so much of variation. He has ensured that uh, the bike that uh, he's trying to produce, uh, if it is charged, it will go to at least 100 to 150 kilometers, considering the fact that in a day, uh, the bike, bike travel is not more than 50, 60 kilometers, what a person does. And he has invested a lot of his time. And in the in the due course of time, he's created an organization, a structure, and he is leading this company. So I'm sure when I say that the journey is tough, at the same time, there are people who are passionate about what they want to do. And they ensure that they take it to a very, very conclusive end. But having said this, please also understand that innovation space or startup ecosystem is meant for those who have conviction in their, themselves, who are intelligent and who are also able to upgrade themselves very, very fast. This may or may not happen if you're working for a company. If you're just an employee to the company, you have a defined KRA, that is uh, your, uh, you know, the key result area and the performance indicator, that you work in a given domain, either you work in, a, in one specific production side or you're in the sales side or you're in the R&D side, uh, or you're in your specific domain side, but you don't do overall. But once you get into this ecosystem, it is important that at a very early age, you need to have that, what we call it as the maturity to understand how business operates. And what is most important is how do I have a cutting edge product or a technology with which I will be able to sustain. I'll give you a few more examples, which are known to you. You've all seen the example of Baiju. And, uh, you know, uh, the way in which he's grown, uh, a simple uh, uh, man from a small village who just went in to uh, help one of his friends to crack his uh, IIT. So he, he is somebody who was uh, not in India, he was overseas. He came to India for some time and his friend wanted some help and support to crack the IIT. This is where he helped his friend crack the IIT and this is where you realize that if I can help my friend crack an IIT, why can't I get into a business venture where I'll solve this problem of multiple people who uh, want to crack this. So he himself 
started giving examinations of cat he cracked cat, cat two to three times he cracked the interview of cracked multiple times he cracked iit multiple times and he realized that if he could do that he could help and support a lot of people in all locations and this is where the growth and the birth of the birth of byju's took place and now it's a history and i think it's a household name uh, the cricket team is today wearing a t-shirt of byju's and you see that around you but it all started very modestly and very simply uh, with one person understanding one problem statement this is another homegrown uh, entrepreneur that we have in the city of pune akshay malhotra uh, uh, who runs a company called early salary and he said that uh, you know towards the uh, end of every one month people uh, tend to uh, have consumed the complete salary and this is the time in which uh, you require some money by the time because most of the companies have a cycle where you the salary comes on 7th or 8th or 9th so for a week people have that issue and challenge of money and cash crunch so this is where he set out this company called early salary where he reached out to multiple uh, companies and Uh, the employees of those companies were given short term loan of of this seven days of bandwidth and this is where his made a rocking success in the fintech market so this is another example of somebody who was very passionate and who understood a very painful area of employees in a given company and sorted this out and today he is uh, doing rocking business as you can really see having said this let me also come to the fact that startup is not about glamour don't think that all startups become successful but it is also a lot of hard work that people have to do to reach to what it is now here having uh, gone through some of the examples now i am going to take you very uh, slowly into how you could do that So I would like all of you who are doing this session today to think of the problems around you. And I strongly feel that every big problem is equal to a big opportunity. If there is no problem, there is no solution. And if there is no solution, there is nobody who will fund you. So no one will pay you to solve a problem that does not exist. so i'm sure when you are getting it so entrepreneurship or a startup ecosystem doesn't mean that i just bring a product in the market and sell uh, to some of my friends and feel happy about it it's about creating a venture where i get confidence of people who would like to make investment in me so that is very important so we need to think big we need to think of big problems and we need to convert this big problems into big opportunities by our sheer thought dedication and our hard work and that's quite possible to do so just think of the big problems around you today itself and start jotting down what could be this uh, problems understand the problems understand who has a problem where has the problem come out from when does the problem occur who has most often this problem and what is the root cause of the problem who what which when where what where is what we need to really look at when whenever we are talking of a problem now here i would like to give a very very simple example that happened in it madras in one of the startups and this particular startup no, sorry this is the example of kora mangalam in bangalore again an example of bangalore bangalore everyone is very fond of having coffee and they like to get their cakes on the coffee typically in all the companies and in all the corporations what you really see is that there is a vending machine and the vending machine gives you a coffee the taste of which you enjoy for first two days 
and the third is the taste is so monotonous that no one even wants to go to the vending machine and have a cup of coffee so there were two early stage uh, ideators who felt that this is a very important need of people who are working in companies i'm not talking of the times today where because of covid all the companies are closed but i'm talking of uh, the times which of course it's going to open up after some time where people start working in the companies and when they start come working in the companies for 12 hours 14 hours what really keeps them going is that one beautiful cup of a coffee and this is where these people realize that they reached out to a lot of uh, executives there and they asked the executives you would you like to have a nice coffee from the koramangal area which is a very famous coffee joint where people tend to go in the lunch time so they had to walk out of their office to reach the coffee shop to have the coffee and come back which they could do only once in a day so people said that uh, we'll be very happy if at, at our door steps we get the coffee you know if the coffee is available to us at our door steps we are happy to have that particular coffee so problem statement is defined so everyone says wow this is a problem statement i have found a problem statement and now i'm coming with a startup and this is where these two boys started looking for you know they reached out to the vendor uh, who was giving coffee in that particular uh, outlet and they said that can you give this coffee uh, uh, to the uh, uh, to the companies they said we are happy if we get business and if you can do the transportation and logistic and everything if you can manage kindly go ahead and take this coffee and that's where the story of the startup started and the the startup was very happy they found a whole logistic chain uh, vendors boys etc who would carry the mugs of, you know you, you know the the kettles of coffees and reach it to the desks of uh, the corporates and they decided that they will give this free of cost initially to do the testing of the product and when they did the testing of the product they found that more than 600 700 corporates wanted to do this and so they said wow we are rocking successful we have understood a problem we have a solution and after a month they realized that they can't keep giving this free of cost to every plant and this is where they said that wow well, now we will have to charge something then they went on to define the calculated the cost and you know logistic cost the cost of coffee and everything and then they came to the conclusion that each coffee will cost an x amount so it was some 60 or 70 rupees per coffee and then um, they reached out to the social media again and they already had a, a a base of the clients who were already taking this and then they felt that now that they're used to it they will immediately buy my coffee you know for a month we will have so much of revenue so all the projections were done on the excel sheet saying that wow and when they realized that uh, from the 700 800 people who were taking free coffee there were only about 60 of them who said that they would like to pay up and 60 people who paid up in uh, in about 3 to 4 days they started coming with a complaint saying that are you coffee thandi ho jati hai by the time i it reaches my desk as long as it was free they were very happy to have it and the moment there is a cost attached to it this is it. so this is where the company had to rethink and and you know you know so i'm not getting into the details of it and then the journey of the real startup actually happened uh, post that and they are in the process of redefining and doing some amount of good work they redefine the cost structures they redefine how uh, things will uh, so the delight of the customer is taken care of having said this all of them be it akshay malhotra be it uh, you know uh, the top motors company that i spoke of kapil shetty everyone has gone through the transition where the delight happens uh, to certain extent but the moment a customer has to pay for it is a time where you all know, beat by juice everywhere there has been cases and problems and issues of a startup founder who has to find solutions to this and i'm sure all of you when you think of a problem uh, you're also uh, quite excited about the fact uh, the journey of mark zuckerberg and i know mark zuckerberg and i know when yesterday when there was in the newspaper that facebook is going to close down uh, there a lot of uh, howl and cry and question mark because it has become so much of a part of our life and i'm sure if you've seen the movie social networking which is a movie which is made on 
uh, Mark Zuckerberg's to full story, you will understand how difficult the journey is for a startup. But what is the problem that uh, Facebook actually initially, what is it that Facebook uh, or Mark Zuckerberg, when he was a student in Harvard, what is it, the problem that he was trying to solve? He said in his own words that what I was building was this application for a Harvard student. There are 6,000 students to say, share some information about themselves and stay connected with their friends and family. And what we basically just found since then is that the application is something that almost everyone needs. So they realize that sharing information about what you do is not something that can be confined to 6,000 uh, inmates of Harvard University alone. They said that this is something that everyone needs and everyone has an identity and they would like to express. So it is a definition of your persona, your personality that you reflect on your Facebook pages. Some like to flaunt about their hobbies, some want to flaunt about the gardening, someone wants to flaunt about going to a movie, someone long likes to flaunt about socializing, someone long likes to flaunt, uh, flaunt about the party that they have, and many things. It's an expression of a persona of an individual that you want to reach to people instantly, and that is what led. So that was one single problem statement of Mark Zuckerberg, and that is how do I connect to people instantly the day, the moment they have done something, you know, that's the, then this is where like Facebook and then the things that started getting posted on the walls and then, you know, now you have the Facebook lives of the world, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so this is what led to creation of what we call as the Facebook. So everyone is there to solve a particular problem. And in my previous slide where I've mentioned that Mark Zuckerberg said that for six full years, I did only one thing, and that one thing was coding, coding, and coding, changing, you know, bringing a change in my product. And I'm sure you must watch movie Social Networking to understand this. Very impressive movie if you look at it from the perspective of, so I'm sure you would have seen it also if you've not kindly go and see that particular movie. And this is where is the story of Facebook that we've seen. So, a college again it's a college startup in 2004 where he was a student in harvard from his then first uh, you know the funding that came to him in 2005 and then the journey up to 2011 that he emerged into the market where he had 84 billion valuation and today you we know where facebook stands let me also take you to another example of uh, Super Maheshwari, uh, again, a Pune based. He's now gone into the unicorn category. And he's the one who uh, realized that he was an expert in e commerce. And he just transformed his understanding of e commerce into a need that he realized that whenever he went abroad, he would bring toys for his kids. And this is where he realized that can I get something which is very unique on an online platform for uh, you know the young parents uh, who have very small kids and this gave birth to what we call it as first cry online product for babies and baby care product and today he has more than one 700 stores across india so this is another example of and this is again homegrown pune based maharashtra based i know you are in jalgaon but in Pune, we have had this kind of examples around us that, you know, you know, quick heal. Everyone knows that quick heal is there in every computer. And this is uh, Mr. Katkar, who was just running a calculator uh, repairing shop. He was just having a small shop. And from there, we see what quick heal uh, stands for. What is it that you could do? What is it? How can you define the problem? There are multiple problems, there are social problems. Even if you look at the uh, Millennium uh, Development Goals, which are put in by UN, these are eight goals that I have stated in front of you. Any of these goals could be taken up by any one of you, you know, uh, as problem statements to solve the problem. But how do uh, we start? So second thing is first, I define the problem. And after definition of the problem, the second lesson I would like to give to everyone who is listening to this session today is, I need to understand why, how, what. What is it that I am doing? 
how am I am I going to do this and why am I going to go do this is something that I really need to look at. As in the words of Vivekanand himself, who said that make that one idea your life. Think of it, dream it, leave that idea, put it in your brain, let your, your muscles, your nerves, your every part of your body really think only about that idea. And uh, I'm sure you're going to be really, really successful. But you need to define that eureka moment of yours where you say that I have found an idea, which is very, very important for you. But when you are finding an idea, it is important to understand the context in which you have found that particular idea. What is the context around it that brings that idea? For example, in case of uh, Facebook, the context was social networking. Or in case of Baiju, it was uh, the context was tutoring, which was a very, very common thing across India that everyone used to run after tutors. So the context, social context was very, very strong in case of all these companies who became very, very successful. It is also important, how do you find the context? You find the context if you start meeting people, talking to people, understand how they live, what are their challenges, and this will give you different kinds of insights. So for which it is important for you, and today you would say that you cannot meet people physically, but there are networking uh, ways by which you could understand the listings of people through the internet medium, which is quite possible for you to do. And while you are trying to find the context, you need to look at what is the human uh, element in that, you know, human experience in that. You need to analyze what are the challenges and what are the opportunities and what is it that you could uh, make a future uh, possibility for anyone to do, you know. So, which is very, very important. For example, um, there is a uh, one uh, uh, social Ashoka Social Fellow in Pune, uh, uh, Mr. Chaturbedi, and he said that the major problem that he identified uh, by understanding and talking to people is the problem of sanitation and the toilets, the public toilet system. And initially, because he came from US, he said that, okay, I've come from US, uh, I have some money with me, so let me put this money into a small area where I will ensure that I will sponsor all the cleaning of the toilets, public toilets. But he realized over a period of time that he has understood the problem. He has also has some kind of money to solve the problem for a given region. But if he has to scale this, there is no answer to the scale through funding only 10 toilets in a city. If you have to clean up a, a lack toilets in India, what would be the solution to it? And this is where you realize the work of toilet cleaning is not a work I want to do. And that is where he created what using sensor technology to detect whether, whether there was water, whether it was cleaned or not. And this is where he approached to all municipal corporations and gave the solution. The work of cleaning the toilet is of municipal corporation should be done by municipal corporations only. But how can I aid and help? And this is where his sensor technology came very handy. And today he's doing work with few governments, including the Haryana government. And this is where the scale has actually arrived for him. It's also important that if you have to be in the startup ecosystem, you need to understand what are the networks around you. Who are the people that you surround yourself with? If you surround yourself with people who are lower than you in their thinking process and in their ambition, you will, I'm sure the slide tells you all, you know, surround yourself with five losers and you become a sixth loser. Surround yourself with those who challenge you, push you, criticize you, tell you you are not worth the mark and set benchmarks and standards for you is the time where you will realize that you'll be able to do something good in your life, which is very important. Be it entrepreneurship journey, be it a startup journey, be it your own journey of your life, your own career, it is important that you need to have this. Um, build your networks very, very cautious. They start looking at the right kind of people, develop relationships with people, uh, if you have friends who don't ins in inspire you and only there to say that, wow, boss, you are great, please get rid of your friends if you want to be in the startup ecosystem. And the next important thing that you need to do is start looking for mentors around you. 
as Isaac Newton himself said that if I have seen further, it is only by standing on the shoulders of giants. So if I have someone who is great, big enough, who can help me and support me, can I use his shoulder to look through his lenses on what I really want to do? It will be the real success for me. So it is important to find your uh, mentor network. You need to understand that your mentor network has to be authentic 100%. Explain your passion to your mentor explain that why of yours and try and be persistent in whatever you really want to do with your mentor. Don't forget, gratitude is very important. Say a thank you to people when someone has helped you, which will be very, very helpful in your startup journey. Uh, and the seventh and most important thing is your habits. Our character is basically a composite of our habits. So very important habits will give rise to your values, will give rise to your leadership and will create the impact. If you're going to be leading an organization, it is important for you to become disciplined as a leader. So unless you have the right kind of habits, you will not be able to inculcate the same kind of values in your organization. You will not be able to showcase that as leader and you will not be able to create an impact even in your own organization, leave alone in the business community. So this is what I mentioned and this is what Steve Jobs has been speaking about. Solve a big problem, understand the psychology, understand your why, have, be focused, network, have your mentors, do uh, express your gratitude and have the right kind of habit. If you have this, your half, your battle is won. You know, so that is very important. And I'm sure incubator is there, uh, incubation centers are there. In Jalgaon, you have a nice, beautiful incubation center. Your people like they can date to help you, support you in your incubation journey and uh, define your who, when, why, where, why. And don't be scared your business may or may not uh, succeed. Don't think of the failures today. Give your best and you will, I'm sure you're not getting into a sinking ship at all, not at all. So have conviction in yourself, have courage to get into the startup ecosystem. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. So, have we? So there are oh, like questions are there, I think. So, what are the ways to stimulate the creative startup ideas in the minds of students? How to build a creative skill? I think this is a, a, a faculty who is asking. I think we can do a specific session with faculty members. Uh, any questions from the students? And I'm happy to answer. Uh, uh, if I think. Uh, uh, there is a question that if my vision and the vision of the company I work for same, should I help the company grow or should I form another company? Um, uh, the vision of the company and your company, your own vision could be the same, but the kind of work that you do in the company will define, uh, you know, your satisfaction. So it will all depend uh, whether you're satisfied by taking up a small profile in the company. Uh, because day one, no one will make you a CEO of a company. But if you start your own startup, day one, you are the CEO of that own startup. So the choice is yours. Take over for a lot of time. They can have taken two, three questions. I think rest of them, uh, my mail ID is available. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they can reach out to me. Perfect, perfect. So we will compile a list of questions and send it to you, ma'am, for your presentation. Uh, sure. Nikhil, do you want to give a vote of thanks, please? Sure, sure, sure. I'm delighted to have it. So, ma'am, on behalf of the host, I'm delighted to see that you have shown the entrepreneurship is not only a value addition, rather is a value essential in the 21st century. For And with the help of the universities, like Pune and Zalga, we are taking the proactive leads in establishing the loosely coupled and the customized supportive ecosystem. And thanks to see that IFOCs are with us. And it is a pleasure to hear that you have touched not only about inculcating the entrepreneurial skills in the participants' mindset, but also incorporating the intrapersonal skills for the organizational growth, which will definitely in time can def uh, take them towards initiating their journey towards the entrepreneurship. 
I also like the mantra you gave that uh, the only constant thing is change, and which will be very much constructive in the decoding the innovations. Uh, uh, whatever eight goals you have shown to us. Uh, adding to one of the questions which faculty has uh, asked, uh, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to connect him with the Pune or Jalgaon universities to us so that he can get very good input from our end. At the end of the session, dear participants, I'll like to inform you that the people like Apurva ma'am, our directors, Bhushan sir, Gite sir, me, Nilesh, we are not the employees of the organization. We are rather called ourselves as an intrapreneurs who are creating the new wealth creation opportunities. And at, at the end of this, uh, when we talk about the ecosystem, which Madam have uh, 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 elaborated, so it is only about taking a calculated risk and verifying as well as validating the elasticity of your boundaries, which will be either social, cultural, or commercial uh, around you. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, yeah. I have to quickly rush for something. Else. Yeah, yeah. Thank and you. I thank you put, so much. Put my mail ID there. You can send out your questions to me on my mail ID, and I'm happy to take up. Mikhil, can we have a small uh, screenshot, please, of picture? Yeah, sure, sure, Dikhi. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you.